What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode. We're up here at Mount Lassen National Park. I've got my son, Ethan, with me. And we're hanging out at Manzanita Lake. As you can see behind me, we got the camper. Obviously, no boats fit on top of that. But thankfully, Oru Kayak sent me a foldable kayak. I've been super anxious to check it out. Ethan's actually been really excited about it. He was the first one to get the kayak unwrap it. As soon as I brought it home, he couldn't wait to play in it. So I was like, hey, I'm gonna bring you along. You could show him how to set it up. What did you say, Ethan? Like five, 10 minutes for setup? Yeah. We're actually gonna, we're gonna time it for you guys to see what it looks like. And then we're gonna get on the water and go for paddle. So let's get into it. So here's how it got sent to me in this little bag right here. It's a little backpack and it's got straps on top to kind of cinch it down as well as a neat little backpack deal. The whole thing weighs about 26 pounds. So, you know, pretty lightweight for a 12 foot recreational kayak. Okay, buddy, it's not a race. I want you to do a good job setting it up. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna time lapse it and I've got the stopwatch here and I'm gonna go ahead starting it now. There we go. There you go. So there you go, you guys. 10 minutes and 20 seconds. Okay. Not bad. Getting faster every time. Yep. All right, so there it is. You can see it's got a big open cockpit. I mean, huge. Really, anybody could fit in there. This little piece right here is your adjustable foot brace. <laughs> Ethan's got it set up for his short little legs, which is kind of cool that he's small enough to fit in it. You ready to go for a paddle, Ethan? Let's go paddle. All right, let's go. See you later. Oh, wait, you're going to need this. Here you go. Thanks. Go nuts. All right, dude, have fun. All right, I will. Well, what do you think? How was your maiden voyage? I like it, Dad. We should get one. <laughs> yeah, I think it looks like it glides across the water nice. Yeah, it does. All right, you know what? We forgot to do an important thing, dude. What? Forgot to make it our own. I think we need a Headwaters logo on it. What do you think? I think we should. All right. We got to send this one back to Oru, but at least they'll have a little, uh, a little reminder that we were here. I think right here. Yeah. If you guys want your own Headwaters stickers, right below in this video, you'll see our little merch tab. Anything you buy from there helps support the shop. You can buy stickers, we got um, hats, we got t-shirts, sweatshirts. Actually, hats aren't on there yet, but they're coming. Uh, anyway, and between that and our Patreon, you guys, that's a really great way for you to support the channel. Now that we don't have a shop, we're really relying on just our reviews and, um, and anything you can do to help us out helps us out, so. All right, uh, I think it's my turn to hop in. Yeah, your turn, I'll have some lunch. Okay, sounds good. I think we're gonna need these guys about three foot longer from where you were at. <laughs> I thought this would be a good place to talk to you guys about dock entries because you know you don't always have a lawn tramp to get in and out of and sometimes stepping down into a kayak can be a little awkward. Although this kayak with the huge open cockpit is pretty easy. But I'm gonna show you guys what we call a dock entry. And what we do is we take our paddle, put it behind the seat. This one has a little bar across, usually you have a cockpit. And then from there you can either sit on your butt or because the ground's wet, I'm gonna just scooch over and I'm gonna slide myself down in the cockpit. Well, what you'll notice is with my weight on the paddle and braced on the boat, the kayak can't really rock and tip. It sort of locks itself in, making it easier to get in and out. So just a little, uh, just a little hack for you guys, or a little tip. Back in a few. Oh, you know what? I got my life jacket. Most important piece of kit right here. You guys having a nice paddle? Coming. Nice paddle? Oh yeah. It's awesome. Nice quiet. Yeah. It actually gets warm when you 
Yeah, yeah and kind of have it to ourselves. It's been so busy all summer. It's nice to have a little quiet. Yes, it is. That feels better. I'm also checking out this uh, Ascent paddle today. Uh, not really part of the review, but they sent me this to try out and it's been sitting in my trailer. I've been waiting for a recreational kayak to take it on. So this seems like the perfect fit. This is a 230 centimeter. So for a 28 inch wide boat, you know, maybe a little long, I might go with the 220, but pretty good. This is a carbon shaft, plastic fiberglass reinforced blades. And I really like the grips they have on them. So it really indexes you to the paddle. About 150 bucks, I think. So kind of comparable to an Aquabound Stingray. Feels a little bit heavier, but also it's great, great grip, great feel in the water. The schlep is a big thing, the, the word schlep. Moving the kayak around, storing it, dealing with the kayak can be a, a limiting factor for a lot of folks. This kayak takes a lot of that out of there. You've got a 10 minute setup and a 10 minute takedown. So 20 minutes of your day is to setting up the boat. But honestly, how long does it take to strap down a kayak to a car? Probably about the same, probably 10 minutes on either side of your paddle. And for some folks, muscling a kayak up onto a car or putting racks on their car just may not be an option. So this is a good way to go. You can fit this in the back seat of your car. You can fit it in the trunk of your car, or like we did in the back of the RV. And then when you get to where you want to go, you just unfold it. 10 minutes later, you're on the water. And it's only 29 pounds. So moving it and dealing with it off the water makes it a lot easier too, between the backpack or the shoulder strap they've got. Definitely takes a lot of the headache out of paddling for some folks. Now, I don't want to lie to you and say, hey, this is just as good as, say, you know, for the money, an Eddy Line Sandpiper, you know, which is around, I think, $1,300. So this is $1,199, a little bit less. But you get the idea. It's not going to be the same paddling quality as something like that. You know, it doesn't have sealed bulkheads. It doesn't have hatches. This is a flat water, you know, close to shore kind of a kayak. What you're paying for is the ease of use, the portability, the fact that it fits in a closet when you get home or fits in your garage. Um, what you are sacrificing is storage, efficiency. Uh, it's definitely not quite a hard shell kayak, although it's a step up from a lot of the inflatables that I've tried out. And the other flip side is, man, we're out here. You know, I have the camper. If it wasn't for a folding kayak, we wouldn't be out here today. So it has its place in my eyes. In fact, Ethan's definitely trying to talk me into keeping this one. Oh, bald eagle right overhead. Check the stability here. Really stable. I'm gonna try to creep up here, get my camera. Definitely have no concern about falling in the water in this thing. It feels crazy stable, even standing up, which you know I doubt you would do, but it's you, you, you can. One thing I do notice with the seat, you know, the seat's just a uh, right there on the floor. Uh, you're low in it. You know, you're on the bottom of the boat. Some boats now have nice contoured seats. You sit up a little bit. Not the most comfortable boat I've ever felt on the foot pedals here is, you know, you're not translating a ton of power into the boat. There's just a place to rest your feet as I'm driving and pushing, you know, you got a little bit of flex and it's just a strap. But again, you got to factor in the fact that this is all about being portable and getting people on the water. Here he is. He's coming back in. How was it? It's nice. I like it. I mean, it's definitely a recreational kayak. It's close to shore, stable. But on a lake like this, where you got a small body of water and you just want to get out and enjoy it, I definitely think we need one of these kicking around in the RV in the sailboat, don't we, you? We definitely do. <laughs> well, I tell you what, it doesn't do us a lot of good to just have me in the kayak. I think we both should get in and take it for a paddle, check out the weight limit, and see how it does. You want to you wanna hop in the back? Sure. And I know they have a few different models, too. I know this one's like their big, open, recreational cockpit, so super easy to get in and out of. But you know, if you're a little smaller person, like I'm 6'2", 220, and I feel like this is a big kayak, you may want to check out some of their little narrower, sleeker ones, as I think you're going to get a lot better speed out of them and just have a lot more close fit. So this is the beach. I think they make a smaller one. They also make like a 13-foot touring one. All right. So 300-pound weight capacity. Again, I'm like two, probably 215 dress. Ethan's 85. So we are at that 300 pound weight limit. Let's go over and check out these fall colors over here. I gotta say, I really like this accent paddle. I didn't know that I would like the grips, but it feels great. I mean, what a nice, nice blade. And 
something really well built. It feels solid in your hand. Anyway, it's nice to see another manufacturer coming out with a really good paddle uh, and an affordable price for you guys. Super pretty fall colors. All right, what do you think back there, Hitchhiker? Probably be more comfortable up front. You want to try to ride up here? Sure. All right, let's see if we can uh, do this without flipping over. This water is such that you don't want to be in it at all. All right, here, I'll hold the phone. No pressure. Just don't tip us. Which way are you coming? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Whichever way. Here, why don't I come? Maybe I'll come forward. Sure. <laughs> Stability check. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> We're going to flip it over here. I got a better idea. I'm going to lay back. You go over the top. Over the top of you? Yeah, what, don't you, th what do you think? Uh, Can you can't go back anymore? Um, okay, there's just that. Oh god, okay. <laughs> Technical reviews is what you can find ahead while this kayak shop. That's the thing. You need to know to make an informed buying decision. <laughs> Alright, you're in charge. You paddle for a minute. Okay. That feels a lot better trim. You know we have a picture in the shop of you doing this at like two or three years old. Huh? Yeah, you, you were in the my lap on a little uh, necky dolphin, a little blue necky dolphin paddling us around. In fact, it made the newspaper. Uh, Somebody took the photo of us and it made it the load I knew something back in the day. Wow, oh, so pretty out here right now. Mount Lassen in the background. The water is just crystal clear. See all the way to the bottom of the lake? Yeah. See the brown trout swimming around? So one thing we didn't really talk about in this review that I feel like needs to be addressed is uh, the durability of this. You know, it's kind of like a corrugated plastic similar to, I don't know, the only other thing I've seen is like those mailbox bins that are heavy duty plastic. They say in their advertising that it's good for up to 20,000 folds, which that's a lot of breaking down and, and setting back up. Uh, as far as impact, it seems like it would have a lot of impact resistance as long as it wasn't a sharp, blunt object. I could see if it was something real sharp that it could penetrate that plastic, but I'm not gonna have this thing long enough to really give you guys an honest to goodness review. Uh, if you have an Oru kayak and you've used it in the past, do me a favor, leave those in the comments. I, it's always a community review. I do say my part, but if you guys chime in below and give your real world experience after owning it, that's so much more valuable than me talking about it. And, uh, and I'm kind of curious to hear how these things do long term, because short term, it seems like a really good option. If you're contemplating this versus a hard shell, but you have a roof rack or you have a place to store a kayak, I still think that hard shell kayak is going to offer a better performance for the money. You know, I equate this to like a Eddy Lime Skylark or a Sandpiper, and the Eddy Line definitely is a 40% more efficient, definitely exponentially nicer paddling. But the fact that you have to have a rack, it has to fit up on top of your car, there are some obstacles to overcome. That was an awesome paddle. Just great to be out here. Great to have Ethan on the water too and in a video. I know he loves it so much. So I'm trying to, try to make that a habit. Uh, gonna get out again, I'm gonna use that same dock entry. So I got my one hand wrapped around the bar and the paddle and the other hand I'm gonna put on the ground in the paddle. And that's gonna stabilize me so I can just slide my butt right over. And this is my favorite part of this thing. That thing's a feather. It's got that nice handhold inside. So when you want to transport it around, you just grab it, and away you go. It weighs nothing. Very cool little boat. Thank you, Oru, for giving me the opportunity to test it out. Appreciate you guys' partnership. If you guys are looking for something portable, lightweight, if you're living in a small space, check out Oru Kayaks at orukayak.com. And if you have any questions, do me a favor, leave those in the comments below. And until next time, this is Dan and Ethan wishing you happy paddling. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.